Introducing the new Love of Foodie salad dressing and dip mix. Available in Herb Lovers and Honey Mustard Lovers blends. Our salad dressing and dip mix are made with all natural ingredients without any artificial flavors or preservatives. They are easy to mix and come with clear instructions. Perfect for busy cooks who want to create delicious, healthy meals quickly and easily. Get the new Love of Foodie salad dressing and dip mix now. Available on loveofoodie.com and on Amazon. Hello. How are you? Good afternoon, everybody. It's Michelle Mazzara. Welcome to Love of Foodie LinkedIn Live. Today is January 29th, the last Monday of January and the beginning of a new year. And I'm very happy to be back doing my LinkedIn Live show today. I, I started it two years ago. And the interesting thing is my first guest on my LinkedIn Live show two years ago was Rachel Beck. And it's kind of funny that today it's the first LinkedIn live show of 2024 for me. And Rachel Beck is my guest again in January. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you, Michelle, so much for having me. You know, you and I have been friends for a long time. And I, I want to honor you today. That's what I want to do. You we are need to honor all of our LinkedIn family and all of our friends. And before I get before we start talking, Rachel, I want you to. I mean, first of all, the show plays live on LinkedIn. So I have to say, if you don't know Rachel, then you're probably not on LinkedIn very often and you're not very active on LinkedIn because Rachel is a huge, not only is she an author and we can talk about her book um, also, but she's a huge, huge contributor on LinkedIn. It's hard for me to say you can be on LinkedIn and not know Rachel Beck, but let's yeah. pretend somebody doesn't know who Rachel Beck is. Rachel, give us a little synopsis, a little overview of what you do and how you enrich people's lives every day on LinkedIn. You know, Zvi, I'm, I'm here to help as many people as I can. You know, you know, you've known me for a long time that I'm, I'm, I stand behind my network and push people forward. That's my leadership style, which is very different. And I'm here to help people. I'm here to help as many people as I can. And I feel that that is the responsibility of a leader. It's a bit, and it's important. And I, I, I really feel that many, I mean, I'll be honest. I feel like a lot of people are missing this, right? If you are a leader and you better earn that title, that's how I personally feel about it. Like, I don't think that that title should just be bestowed upon you. I think it's something that you need to earn. I really do. And I'm here for my network. You know, I always tell people it's a symbiotic relationship between you and your network, right? And you're there to help each other. And that's what I'm out here doing. Right. And you share a lot of stories. Um, you're a guest, it seems like, at least a couple times a week on somebody's show, so, Rachel, what got you, how many years have you been active on LinkedIn as far as a contributor? It's been a long time. You know, it's been a long time, and it is something that I think what people are missing is the, it takes a tremendous amount of work, you know, to get to the level, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to be very dedicated. You have to want to do it. You have to want to put the hours in. And people, you know, everybody wants success. Everybody wants, you know, people want fame. They want all of it. But there's other sides to it. You know, there, there's a lot of other sides to it, but it requires a tremendous amount of work. And when people get up in the morning, they need to ask themselves, are they willing to do the work that's necessary? Right. So tell us the ways that you help uh, impact others on LinkedIn. What, what are some of the things that you share and what are some of the tools that you give all of us? You know, I came up, I've been doing tips for success like every Friday. And I came with that because I believe that you need to pass that ladder down. I really, really do. And I feel very strongly about that. I have a mentor on this platform who took me under his wing. And I'm still very, very loyal to him. He believed in me when nobody else did. And I think it's a responsibility to do that. 
you know, to pass it back down, help, you know, help other people. I remember Michelle, when I first started, right? This man wrote me a message in DM and he said to me, and I must, I think I had like 20 or 30 followers at the time. I mean, it was the very beginning of my journey. And he said to me, you're never going to make it. You're never going to be successful. It's never, ever going to happen for you. So being the person that I am, I responded and said, thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. And I promised myself that if I ever hit that point or where I am now, that I would never, ever treat anybody else that way. So I always, I always tell people, don't dismiss somebody in the beginning of your journey because it's not a good idea. And you and I both know, flash forward one year from now, what happens? And it's happened with this person where he's come around now and wants to get into my network. But I always tell my network, people, remember the way that you're treated. Absolutely. And you know, what a horrible thing for, and what a demotivator for anyone to say you're never going to make it. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I just can't imagine anyone saying that to anyone. Um, so shame on him. <laughs> no, I, I, I absolutely remember, you know, who he was, how he treated me, how dismissive he was. And the thing is, I, I, I always tell people, the other two mistakes I see a lot of people make is pride, ego. And it's very, it's always heart-wrenching to me when I met somebody a year ago and they were kind and humble and sweet, right? Flash forward one year and I'm like, it's not even the same human being. And it's, it's hard to watch. So those are the two mistakes. I see people making this mistake all the time their their ego runs away from them you know they, they just it's hard to watch and that's why i will never ever stop educating people on this platform right right so rachel what was um sum up 2023 for you what kind of year did you have personally professionally because for me 2023 was a very challenging year um there were a lot of mm, Things that happened with Love of Footy, my brand, that were not foreseen, sort of fixed fees, fixed um, costs, ways of doing business that I hadn't um, planned, that I had to figure out, I had to pivot, I had to get through some kind of growing pains. Um, I'm there, I got through it, but it was a challenging year. And I think when we are all challenged, that's when we really go deep in, in within ourselves and say, do we have it in ourselves? to keep going. And I'm just curious, what was 2023 like for you? And then we'll talk about 2024 because I'm excited for 2024. So I can tell you this, Michelle, everybody inside, I would say 90% of the people who are inside my network had a horrible 2023. Horrible. Like I honestly can tell you that I don't know anybody who had a good 2023. And so it was my job to push them through. And that was my job, whether they're fat, you know, a lot of people are battling diseases or they're taking care of people who are sick. Um, the mental health issues are even worse now. So it was my job to get people through that year. Right. And then like, just because the clock flips over to January 1st and then you know, it's a new year. Some people feel like that's magical. Well, the same problems that were affecting people on the 31st are now still affecting them. And so my, my job sincerely was to get my network through some of the hardest times of their life last year. And good, good for you to have been there as a resource and as a support for the people that really needed to get some words of wisdom and some tips. And I know that um, your Friday tips are very, very impactful and meaningful. And, you know, a lot of people look, it's kind of like they look forward to that every week. What's Rachel going to give us? Yeah. So um, the messages are going to be coming out this week. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> They're going to be coming out. Right, right. 
So 2024, I mean, you're right. Some of the, the, the issues that you may have, if it's a health issue or you're caring mm-hmm. for somebody ill, that can definitely roll over into 2024. I guess I'm always excited when I wake up, oh, excuse me, the phone is ringing, but, um, because the slate is clear. Yes, there are some issues that may go with you, but the opportunities are full. And, you know, the unknown is the unknown. Yeah. Where right. at the end of the year, you know what's happened, you know whether it's good or bad. And, and it's kind of like, well, that happened, that happened, that didn't happen. I wish that had happened. But so I'm always very optimistic and hopeful in a new year because anything is possible. And that's, mm-hmm. I guess, what I mean by I'm excited for 2024 because I don't set resolutions myself. Neither. But I, no, but I have goals. I have mm-hmm. very high lofty goals. And my goals this year are about as high as they can get. And let me tell you why. It's kind of a big year for us at Level Foodie. We turn 10 years in August. Yay, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Seriously, you. congratulations. It's a big deal. Years. Ten long, long years, and and the company has morphed. It's pivoted. I've pivoted. You know, the brand's changed, but it's really where I want it to be right now. I mean, as far as Love of Foodie brand, now I just want to expand the brand and co-brand with other companies and do some cool partnerships. Mm-hmm. And so, as um, the year approaches to being ten years old, I'm excited about what. I think is on the horizon and some things that I've already been working on. So that's where I mean, I'm excited for 2024. For you personally and professionally, what do you see as opportunities for you for 2024? 2024? To help more people. To help more people. Okay. The last time, Rachel, you were on, you wrote a book or you had written a book and we talked about the book extensively. I think you were on twice. The first time we didn't. Yeah, we did it twice. And we were going to do a cooking show together, which we still need to do (laughs) together in the kitchen. (laughs) Exactly. And one of the things um, you were going to do is write a second book. And I think you were even working on it. Give us all, everybody who's watching and listening, a brief scenario of or description of your first book because it's so intriguing and it's so heartfelt and um inspirational and then take me bring me up to date where are you in the second book i'm actually i am 100 pages into the second one i had um and i actually wrote something else this year with yes that I did with another author that's going to be coming out that him and I worked on together. So I'm like 75% done with the second book and the other book is done with the other author. And the, you know, Michelle, sometimes the book writes itself and that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's happening with the second book. And I am determined to get the second book out, you know, within the next two years because it's very, very deep. I went a lot further because when you write your first book, you know, you're you're concerned about periods, commas, quotations, you know, the whole thing. Well, I hired an incredible publisher who's phenomenal and she's an editor and you know you're a little different on the second book. Rachel, I need her name because I'm I I started writing ten years ago when I started Love of Booty. The last yeah. chapter of the book, everybody, is what I hope happens at the end of this year, so I can finish the book. So, offline, please share me that her name or his name because I I would like to get the book published this year. Okay, I will text you her information. So it's it's a process, right? Authors become it's first of all, you know. I don't know if you know the story of how my book, why I wrote that book. So it was really funny. I had a girlfriend of mine who's on the East Coast and she had, I met her in India and she actually came back on the second trip. She's volunteering at the orphanage. And I went back to school in 20, you know, I finished my degree. She calls me and I was tired. And I was exhausted. I just went through finals class, was writing law papers. I was exhausted. She calls me and she says, do me a favor. And I'm like, what? She's like, sit down and write a book. I'm like, what? 
I'm like, I'm not an author. I'm like, I'm a photographer. I'm a speaker. I'm not an author. And she said, Rage, just try. And I was like, okay. So I sat down on my computer and I wrote for five hours the first day. And I wrote my book in two months from like in August to in October. And I wrote the entire book. And she said to me, um, I called her after. And I said, how do you know? And she said, it was in you. You just needed someone to tell you that. And what a beautiful Beautiful message from one girlfriend to tell another friend, like, hey, there's something inside of you that you're not seeing right now. And that is funny because that's what I try to do with my network. I, I see so much in them, what they're capable of, what the possibilities are. And you need somebody in your life to do that. Right. So I, you know, early on, I in my career, I used to work for large CPG companies. And one of the companies I worked with was for Revlon in my 20s. And I remember at the time, there was a guy, um, and he was kind of like the god, my godfather. So kind of, mm. to your point, you need that godmother or that godfather or that mentor to kind of help you early on. And because it really helps guide where you're going to go. And the advice that they give you early on is valuable. I mean, I remember certain things that certain bosses said to me, positive and negative, but the mm -hmm. positive ones are right up here. And it sounds like the, your friend who encouraged you to write the book was mm -hmm. just like that for you. And I'm, you know, I'm great. And, and these are those things, you know, it's really interesting. My, my cousin Oso is the one who got me started on my photography business that I did for years, him and I were sitting down having a cup of coffee by the ocean. And he said to me, Rachel, what do you love to do? Like what lights up, up your soul? Like, what is your passion? And I said, photography. And he lived very cat. And my cousin and I are close. It was like a very casual conversation. And he said to me, why aren't you doing this for, why aren't you doing this? If this is what lights up your soul, and your passion, like, why aren't you doing this? And it's something that's really important to me. I want, you know, I'm very passionate about what I do. I will only do work that I am passionate about or give my time to people who are making this world better and not worse. So it's seeing something. So I'm trying to light those candles of 300,000 people every single day. Is that how many people are in your network? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. So, like, I don't know, it's like 260 something, but then you have to add all everybody else. You know, right. it's, it's a lot. There's more than people are aware of. Tell everybody um, a little description about your first book, where they can buy it, the name of the book. I don't know if you have it nearby. If you do, feel free to hate, you know, show it to all of us. Yeah. I actually gave it away. Someone had wanted and asked me. So at my copy, the first oh. one that I held for the first time, someone asked me if they could have it. And I gave it to her, you know, as a gift. My book is Finding Your Way When Life Changes Your Plans. And it's on Amazon. And I'm working on a goal. You know, every day, Michelle, you'll appreciate this. I'll wake up to a message and someone says, your, your life is great, wonderful, perfect. And I write them back. I send them the press release that I have. And I go, do you know my story? And they go, no. And I said, well, you might want to learn it. And you might not want to send that message to people because you don't know their story. And that's why I've been producing my show for five years. So people can learn the story behind the content creators on this platform. Yeah, because your story, you you were adopted mm -hmm. by a Jewish mm -hmm. um, family, but the story of the book is really about how you as an Indian mm -hmm. adopted child didn't fit in, no matter and, and how and how it felt, even though you were surrounded by love and support by this adoptive family and the challenges the book explains how you felt 
from society and judged and discriminated. It's still going, you know what, Michelle, it's really interesting because like, you know, the last three years, I would say I had the worst experiences when it comes to being Indian Jewish women in this country. I've had the worst experiences, um, downright scary. But if anything, you know, I'm going to keep, keep going and keep educating people because there are so many there's so many misconceptions, right? There's misconceptions about Indians, misconceptions about Jewish people. I mean, it's just misconceptions. So it's my job to educate people. I mean, that that's my job. And I've been doing that for 17 years, right? My I've been going into universities, educating people, going into companies, educating people. And I'm passionate about this. And every time I give a talk, someone at the end, I say, okay, ask me any question that you want to ask me because it's my job to educate you. And that's how you do it. That's how you move the needle forward. And people don't want to sit down and have the hard conversations. Well, I'm all for that. Like, ask me that question and I'm going to answer it. So can I ask you, what is the most difficult question, if you recall, that you've ever been asked? Yes, this that's a really good question. I had two times, right? I was teaching in a university. Um, it was a class for multicultural for teachers who were getting educated. And my, the professor asked me to come in. And it was fascinating because... They're learning about multicultural education, and they knew when I walked in the door that I had been a teacher for a long time. One of the girls, it was a very smart question. She raised her hand and she said, you know, Ms. Beck, if this country has treated you so wrong, why don't you go back to India? You know, you'd be safer there. And I said to her, you know, I'm going to get back to you on that question. And I did. I e I slept on it. I emailed the professor. I answered all of the questions. That was one, one of them. And she okay. said, if it's not, and I, she knew, I explained to her that my family has veterans and we stand up for this country and we have military. It was a really good question. She said, why don't you leave? Another one, there was another girl who had said to me when I was doing a talk, it's really profound. Like, like, you know, you have those moments where actually there's, I'm going to talk about this one guy. It was great. I was giving a talk. I was blessed enough to speak at the House of Lords and the House of Commons last year through one of my best friends lives in London. At the end of the talk, one of the males raised his hand and he said, Rachel, you're out there taking care of 300,000 people. Who's taking care of you? And it was so beautiful, so heartfelt. And he said, who's taking care of you? That question stopped me in my tracks immediately. Yeah, that's a good question for sure. And what, what was your answer? You had to think about it, I bet. My answer was there are people who take care of me, that help me. And like, if I'm needing that help, you know, I can reach out to them, I can text them, I can write them. And, but he said, who's helping you? And it, it was a beautiful question. I, and I have those people in my life, in my heart, that if I send a text and said, I need your help right now, they're going to show up. You know, you know, it's our, it's the inner circle. It's our, it's our ride or dies that we have, or I like yeah. you and me, if you said, Rachel, I need you right now. I'm gone. You know, that's our right. friendship. I'm gone. Right. So it is, it's about. And it be a big circle you know i i think facebook and some social platforms are so you know meaningless if the connections aren't real and that's really what i like about linkedin and you and i know who who are the contributors are we both are them we have the people that we interface with weekly and daily mm -hmm. because it's real just to say you have five thousand facebook friends and you don't know any of them or you know 50 of them and you don't know the other that doesn't mean anything you know, and so um, that's really why I like LinkedIn, because the content is meaningful and people are sharing posts that are helpful. 
A, your Friday tips and these podcasts. We've got Michael, we've got Robert out there, mm -hmm. we've got Jill. We have so many good people on LinkedIn that are in our network that mm -hmm. we in, that we learn from every day and impact our lives. And like you said, if I needed help right now, I could reach a handful of people on LinkedIn or more than a handful of people. And I know they'd be right there for me. Exactly. And you know, you, you know, we've been trying to teach people that we're real human beings with a heart and a soul. And I tell I've been telling my network for years, like take that time, build that real friendship. I remember the first day of the pandemic, I mean, I felt it as an empath, like my network was hurting, right? I didn't take one day off during the pandemic as people right. were terrified. And I told them, I'm like, this is the time, you know, build that real relationship and friendship. And I promise you a year down the line, you're going to be very happy that you did this. And you're going to be very happy that you learned a new skill. So there were a couple of people in my network who picked up a new language. They were so excited. They'd write me and go, you know what? I'm going to learn a new language right now. Uh -huh. So it's, it's our responsibility. You know, I always tell people on this platform, like, you need to provide value. You know, it is about your network. You need to provide that. I, you know, honestly, Michelle, I go past posts that provide nothing. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to keep scrolling. You know, that's what I do. If they're not helping their network and it's blatantly obvious, I mean, it's really obvious when they're doing that, I keep moving. I scroll on and I keep going. Right, right. So let's talk about February. It's National Heart Month, which for me yeah. is a, for all women, I mean, it's Go right. Red Month. It's, it's, right. Amer it's Heart Awareness Month. It's American Heart Month. So you said you like to spread love every day of the year, not just on Valentine's Day and not just, you know, during the month of February. What advice can you give for all the LinkedIn people out there, ways to spread love with their posts? How can, how can, people do that if they don't know how to use LinkedIn. Uh, this is, and I'm glad you brought this up because I, and you'll see me do my Valentine's post in two weeks because I, I do a post for everybody, right? For everybody. There's a whole bunch of, but you know, people wake up Valentine's and people, either, you know, they love it or they don't, they have their reason, but I honor the rest of the people who don't. So I do like a funny Valentine's day post. So write that encouraging word. Send, send that love out, send that support out, ask somebody, how can I help you today? You know, how can I help you? Re, you know, what do you, that's half my day is like, what do you need? How can I help you? We need love to coat this entire freaking planet right now more than anything. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, like I, I have seen the worst that humanity has to offer from doing photography. We need love. And it doesn't mean I'm full, this world is not, you know, rainbows, unicorns. We, we know this. And so I think this year it's even more important, but it always, I always end up smiling because I see these people on mm -hmm. Valentine's day and they're like, they, they're like, I'm doing something about love. And in my head, I'm going, where were you the 364 other days? Like, where were you? So I actually, I do like a fun, I do a fun Valentine's Day post. We need it more than one day a year. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and sometimes it's as simple as just smiling at somebody, saying hello, I mean, to a stranger or somebody who you know, you see at a store or at the post office or letting opening the door. I mean, kind, kind, simple acts that cost no money, but are ways of, of sharing love and just being kind and nice. And I think that's also a big part of the LinkedIn platform. It's to show kindness and Absolutely. Yeah, to show yeah. support. Thanks well, so with that, I kind of, it's a Monday and it's a busy afternoon and I don't like to keep the show too long because people have to get back to work. I want to share with all of you my Valentine special before we, well, first of all, Rachel, is there anything else you'd like to share with today that we've missed or that I don't know we should share that I don't know about? 
Yeah, just please go out there, spread some love, ha help another human being, like help somebody. If you want to, you know, you really want to spread it, you know, people will say they're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then they don't do it. I see it a million times all day long. So if you really mean it, then do it. Help somebody. Right. Action versus just verbiage. Thank you. <laughs> So for my gift to all of you out there with um, it being a new year and I want to give you guys a little Valentine's special that I'm offering just to, well, it's going to be between now and the end of January. So you've got a couple more days. Um, we launched in end of November, beginning of December, our new clean eating salad dressings. And this is the Valentine, well, this is going to be our everyday box. We had a holiday one and then we had, um, this is our everyday one. It's a great Mother's Day gift, Valentine's Day gift. Let me show you what's in it. So my Love of Foodie brand is all about eating clean, drinking clean. Um, these are our new salad dress. It's hard with this camera the way it's going, but these are our new um, salad dressing mixes. There's a honey mustard. There you go. And an herb lovers. So these are all natural. The ingredients are, are the ingredients around the back as are the directions and basically you mix it with olive oil balsamic vinegar honey for the honey mustard um whisk it up you gotta you get a whisk in the box so the valentine special is you get one of each of the two uh salad dressings in the box the whisk but the freebie is you get i'm going to throw in a free seafood lovers spice blend so as if you can see my background, there's I actually uh, did a little business trip uh, a couple weeks ago, and I did some photo shoots while I was there. And this is actually um, one of our best selling spices. It's fantastic on fish, shrimp, any kind of seafood. Specifically, if you like salmon, it's amazing on salmon. Um, so the special is if you go to Amazon or loveafoodie.com, that's the only two spots online that have this new variety box um it's only twenty dollars and that includes shipping i will put in a free seafood lovers spice blend and i know you'll enjoy it so you've got a couple days to do it go ahead go to love of foodie or, or amazon and that's my um way of showing love and giving back to everybody who's interested in trying the new dressings and um who doesn't like something free right can I honor you for a second? Absolutely. People need, I know your story and you are an incredible, incredible inspiration. People need to take the time and learn your story. And you'll see, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tear it up in the kitchen with some of those spices and I will film it. It will be, it will be fun and we'll, I'll, you know, I'll share it with my network. You are a warrior and you're strong and you're beautiful and i'm proud of you every single day sweetheart thank you thank you uh, yeah february um i think what rachel's um alluding to is i am a heart disease survivor um seven years ago i had a stent put in my led which is called the widow maker and then in recovery i had a heart attack so yes. february is really important to me because i was misdiagnosed um for a good 10 months and um it was important for me to get involved with American Heart Association, become a brand ambassador for the Minnesota chapter, and really share my story to help others, number one, to help others fight this disease. It is the number one killer for men and women. It's heart disease. It's not cancer. It's not car accidents. It's heart disease. And so much of heart disease can be, I don't want to say prevented because you can have a perfectly healthy lifestyle. And if it's in your genes, you still could develop heart disease, but there's lifestyle changes that you can make reducing your sodium intake, exercise, eating healthy, getting um, a good night's sleep. It's amazing. I, I heard just some statistic and I'm probably going to quote it wrong. So I shouldn't even say it, but sleep is very, very important to heart health. And I didn't realize how important it was. And so you know, you, you can go to American Heart Association, you can get all their tips and, and all the do's and all the things that 
can help you live a healthy lifestyle. But what I try to do is with our product line, help educate people. Hey, you know what? You can drink clean with our iced teas, eliminate artificial ingredients, eliminate as many as you additives as you can to your diet. And by no means would I drink soda pop and I'm not deceiving any soda company out there. It just, to me, that would be a waste of just chemicals with sugar in your body. So try to eat heart, heart healthy, try to drink heart healthy, try to be active. Um, I think mental, your mental um, attitude also plays a big bit, big, huge, huge. your health, right? Um, every time you give back, Rachel, to your community, which you do every day, you go to sleep at the end of the night going, hey, I did something good. I, am, I made a difference in this person's life. And when you give, you do feel better. Yeah, I would, I'm, I'm much more comfortable giving than receiving. I, when somebody gives me something, I'm, I'm, I'd rather give than receive. Let's put it that way. So um, it's just more rewarding. For me. And, we, and you and I both know we need way more givers on this platform, way more. So yep. I'm trying to I'm trying to educate people about that too. <laughs> That's Absolutely. Trying. So um, everybody, I uh, this will be. I don't do these every Monday because I've got an extremely busy. Not that I wasn't busy before, but these do take time. And um, so I do LinkedIn live shows when I feel like there's somebody I really want to highlight or there's um, a subject that I really want to talk about, but they're not every Monday anymore. But you can view all the ones that I've done in the past under a LinkedIn live tab on the Love of Woody website. So there's lots of fabulous guests that I had over the last two years, and I'll continue to do these, but just not every Monday. But and I'm I very always show up for you. I promise you, I will always show up for you. Oh, well, I heard from you at Christmas time and I was like, yeah, you should be out again. And, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful because honestly, I wouldn't have made the time probably to do another show. I don't know when, but then I was like, yeah, Rachel. All right, you gotta do this. <laughs> and so, thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Very oh, it's much. always my pleasure. And when you do get that second book published, mm -hmm. You will be on my show. All you have to do is call me and say it's. I can talk about it now, and you'll you're booked. You're already yeah, pre-booked. It's, it's writing. It's it's going to be writing itself this year. It's quite interesting. Like yeah. I got my hundred pages, you know, written and done. But yeah. Well, I know you said <laughs> right after you wrote your first book, people said, "Rachel, when's the second one?" And that's yeah. often common. They want to hear more. Yeah. Right. And see. Thank so, you. And you look, I forgot, if I didn't tell you this, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. And you are beautiful inside and outside as always. Thank you, love. Thank you, everybody on LinkedIn. If you're not connected to Rachel, I don't even know if you can accept any more connections. Well, you probably can. But you can get followed. People yes, can follow you. And yes. I thank everybody who does that. I always end my week on a Friday saying thank you. Because I, I yep. love my network, man. I love my network. Yeah, you do. You do. And your your network loves you too. And and you've got some really cool people in your network. We know that. Yeah. So everybody have a great week. Uh, the next time I will be doing a show will be the end of February with Jill and Marilee. We're going to do a little cooking segment. I'm not quite sure what we're going to cook. Um, and it's February. It's almost, it's only like 51 days to spring. So that's exciting, gonna, right? I know. I know. <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be fun. It will be. Thank you, everybody. Always waiting.